Hello, this is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 242, Matthew chapter 16 and 17. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. We're moving along. I pray to God that we're moving along. Okay. <laughs> Let me know how that turns out. I think that we've been doing it pretty much every other day. At least we make three a week, right? Yeah. I think we have a pretty good track record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Matthew chapter 16. When Jesus and his disciples came to the other side, they forgot to bring bread. The other side, it's like <laughs> after death or something. You know, they keep going from one side of the lake to the other. And is this a lake or a sea? Well, they call it the Sea of Galilee, uh -huh. our Lake of Tiberias. Okay. It's fresh water. Mm -hmm. has lots of fish in it, but it's not salty like the Dead Sea. Okay. It's about 20 or 30 miles long, maybe 10 miles wide. But it would be kind of a trek to get from one side to the other and back. In a boat, yeah, it's, it's going to take you a couple hours to cross. Okay. So, they forgot to bring bread when they went to the other side. In the last episode, there were crowds that were following Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they didn't bring food, so Jesus fed them. But now it sounds like the disciples didn't bring food. Can God feed people without having a few loaves and a few fishes to begin with? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> but it sounds like it's Jesus and his disciples. Okay. Jesus said to them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They have special yeast there? Well, that's what the disciples are going to be wondering about. What is Jesus talking about here? They forgot to bring bread, and then Jesus says, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Jesus is thinking ahead. How are we going to make bread? We need yeast. But this is bad yeast in this area. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, disciples don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Because the disciples say to one another, He's angry at us for not bringing bread. Jesus was aware of their comments and said, Don't they know that they can't say stuff without Jesus knowing or think things without Jesus knowing? Either they were away from him. They're talking among, amongst themselves. Mm. And they thought Jesus couldn't hear. But either he has really good ears or he can just read their minds. I think they don't know which either. Mm -hmm. Oh, you of little faith. Why do you talk about having no bread? Don't you remember the five loaves that fed 5,000 and the baskets that were left over? Or the seven loaves that fed 4,000 and the baskets that were left over. But I wasn't talking about bread. I was talking about the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then the disciples understood that Jesus wasn't talking about the yeast in the bread, but the yeast in the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeah. Okay. When Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? So this is a town that's about 20 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. Okay. They said, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, others say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said, but who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because no human has revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. Mm, so God told Peter. Yeah. Hey. Here's the answer to the test question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth shall be forbidden in heaven, and whatsoever you allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. That's quite the authority he has now. Yes. Peter. For Catholics, this is telling them about who their first pope is, right? Mm -hmm. He's giving him the authority to rule the church. He's going to be able to not only rule the church, but he's going to be able to say what's allowed in heaven and uh, what's uh, not permitted in heaven. Yeah. Peter is going to have that authority himself. And yeah. he has the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So he's kind of the head guy here. Yeah. And you know what's really funny about that? In verse 17... When Jesus said, Blessed are you, he calls him Simon, son of Jonah. Nowhere does he say Peter there. Well, Peter is a nickname. Oh. His real name is Simon. He calls him Peter because Petros, rock. And now he's saying that upon this rock, that's mm -hmm. Peter, 
I'm going to found my church. Or you could say, it's upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to found my church, or whether it's on this idea yes. that he is the Son of God. Verse 20, then Jesus told his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From this time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders, priests, and scribes, be killed, and raised again on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and said, Lord, this will not happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get away from me, Satan. You have offended me because you value the things of men, not of God. It's a fine way to talk to the first pope. I know, and he, <laughs> he should be honored that Peter wants to stick up for him and protect him. Yeah, but he's calling him Satan here. Uh-huh. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be my disciple... Let him deny himself, carry his cross, and follow me. Whoever saves his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Those disciples are really going to have to think hard. Do I want to continue to follow this guy? Because it's going to be a rough road ahead. Yeah. If we have to carry our own crosses and be with him when he, when he goes to Jerusalem. He's going to have to suffer yeah, they, all these they, things. They, they probably don't know what he's talking about, this cross thing, because okay. he hasn't carried the cross yet, right? So oh, what are you, what are you right. talking about with the cross? But anyway, he is. He's talking about that. You know, and Jesus is a little unpredictable. Like, they never know when he's going to yell at them or say, <laughs> yeah. oh, you're so great. That's true, yeah. You have, <laughs> you, know, you have little faith or you have much great faith. Uh -huh. Verse 27. The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and he will reward every man according to his works. There are some standing here that will still be alive when they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. What kingdom is he talking about? Then? Well, he's talking about the end of the world. There are some people that are standing right in front of him mm -hmm. that will still be around when Jesus returns. He's going to die, he's gonna raised from the dead, yeah. and he's going to come back. And some of the people that he's talking to right there will still be alive when he comes back. Some of you disciples. Yeah. Jesus definitely thinks, and it's clear throughout the Gospels, that Jesus thinks the end is coming Soon. right away. Yeah. Chapter 17. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John to the top of a high mountain. Jesus was transfigured. His face shined like the sun, and his clothes were white. Then Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking to him. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good to be here. Let's make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Weren't the disciples kind of freaked out that Moses and Elijah were there? Yeah, <laughs> you think. <laughs> While Peter was speaking, a bright cloud came down with a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Yeah, this is not the first time he's used that line. No, he did that at his baptism, right? Yeah. When the disciples heard the voice, they fell on their faces. But Jesus touched them and said, Get up and don't be afraid. When they looked up again, they saw only Jesus. And the cloud was gone. And, and also uh, Moses and Elijah. Oh. As they came down from the mountain, Jesus said, Don't tell anybody about the vision until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The disciples asked Jesus, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus answered, Elijah will come first and restore all things. He has already come. Are all things restored then? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right now as he's talking? I don't think so. The disciples understood that Jesus was talking about John the Baptist. Well, they're cleverer than we are. Verse 14, when they came to a large crowd, a man kneeled down and said to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on my son, because he's a lunatic and often falls into fire or water. I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't cure him. Jesus said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. Who's he talking to there? I guess the whole generation. I mean, everybody that's alive at the time on earth. The disciples included? He's upset at everyone. It sounds like the whole generation, that means everyone who was alive at that time, right? Yeah. The current generation. You're all a bunch of faithless and perverse people. 
And what did they do to deserve that? Well, they couldn't cure him. They couldn't cure this guy, this lunatic that had a devil. Mm-hmm. The lunatic who tripped occasionally and no, fell in know. a He's fire a, pit. Yeah, or... so they couldn't cure the lunatic anyway. All right, so Jesus said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long must I be with you? Like this training is taking too long? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bring him to me. Jesus rebuked the devil, and the devil left the child, who was cured from that hour. I guess it was a devil that was causing his lunacy. A really strong devil. It probably was a really strong devil because his disciples couldn't yeah. remove it. The thing that seems strange to me, that Jesus would be upset at a whole generation because his disciples had trouble removing this, this devil. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of impatient of him, it seems. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the disciples asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast out the devil? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. If your faith is as small as a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, move over there and it'll move. Nothing will be impossible for you. But this one can only be removed with prayer and fasting. Even if you have a lot of faith, apparently, that doesn't quite cut it, even though that'll do anything. You can do anything if you have enough faith. Uh -huh. Except <laughs> except maybe not this particular devil. So he was tough, and you have to do a lot of prayer and fasting to do that, I guess. Okay. Verse 22. While Jesus and his disciples were in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of men who will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised from the dead. In the last chapter... Jesus explained to them that he was going to have to go to Jerusalem, and that he was going to be killed, raised again on the third day. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this is the second time he's told them. Verse 24. When they came to Capernaum, they who received tribute money came to Peter and said, Does your master pay the tribute? Peter said, Yes. When Peter came into the house, Jesus said, From whom do the kings take tribute? People from their own country or strangers? Peter said, from strangers. Jesus said to him, then the children are free. But to avoid offending them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and catch the first fish that comes up. When you have opened his mouth, you'll find a coin. Take that and give it to them for you and me. So they're hanging out with kids? Is Jesus, because what does he mean, the children are free? Oh, no one knows what he means by that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like when kids are younger than four, they can get into the swimming pool for free. Yeah. No, it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea what that means, hmm. but it's there. From whom do the kings take tribute? From the people of their own country or from strangers? Because right now they're strangers. They're coming into Capernaum, right? They're not from there. So Jesus yeah, well, and his disciples. Well, they kind of are. They're from Galilee. Oh. They're, they, they live in the region. Okay. The kings are going to get tribute from the f people. people outside, the foreigners, right? Yeah. Not from the people that actually live in the place, the, uh -huh. the residents. Yeah. And so he says, then the children are free. Because they live saying, here. Okay, so we're good. We're, we're free. We don't have to pay taxes. But then he goes on to say, but to avoid offending them, go catch a fish and, and find the coin in his mouth. But why does Jesus call them children? Oh, it's just children. <laughs> he does that all the time. The children of God, the uh, uh -huh. the children of Israel, the, the children oh, of... Oh, I guess. The children of Jesus. I think he means his children. Oh, okay. you know, He's the adult in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, well, just to satisfy them, just go and catch the fish and get the coin out of their mouth. You know, people say what, that what kind of fish this, this probably was? was. A carp. Tilapia. Really? Yeah, there's a lot of tilapia, apparently, that are in, native to the lake there. Hmm. And so sometimes tilapia is called... A money fish. St. Peter's fish. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that is interesting. Well, thanks for explaining all those things to me. Ah, uh, sure. And listeners, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.